day, Josh St. Clair. First time that I've interviewed you this year, uh, at least walking around the pits, and I haven't been avoiding you. I walked by your pit so many times, and you always look busy. It probably has something to do with the fact that you're running four different classes this season long, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I was starting to believe you didn't like me there for a little bit. But I didn't uh, want you to feel that way. <laughs> yeah, no, busy is an understatement with all the cars, but it's fun. They're going good, so it's easy when they're going good. If things go bad, it's not so fun. Are things running good or bad today? They're pretty good today so far. No mechanical issues. All pretty good. Got some speed. Yeah, I remember uh, opening day you were utilizing the double-decker trailer for a lift to get at the transmission or the clutch. Yeah, I took the clutch out of it first practice. That was real helpful to get the season started off. But we got it fixed. Yep. The trailer helps. So it's racing. And uh, you're on top of the speed charts, round two for uh, Pro Stocks. Feeling pretty good there? Yeah, I, I don't know. Short run speed's pretty good. I don't know about long run speed, but uh, I won practice once, so I'll call it a good day, I guess. I don't know. Kevin's stuff. Uh, I just didn't get the long, long run speed in the thing yet, so we'll find out. All right, hope you do. Running uh, Super Street for Mike Hodgkins. How'd that uh, deal come about? Oh, that's my old chassis from I got off Brenton Parrott years ago and run all them races around the all these different places there with it and run good he asked me to drive in that 100 we run good he said he's too old and wanted me to drive so i don't believe he's too old he won last time he was in it but uh you know so it's fun get a little reunion with the old girl want to race in her again so yeah the class is a blast all the guys out there it's like the street stocks i i enjoy it sometimes more than the big cars because there's just so much more out there so many more cars that's what we were talking about with Will Collins last week. He uh, went out in Landon Tapley's street stock for practice just to kind of help him out a little bit. And he was getting the itch to go back street stock racing over late model racing. Oh, it's a blast. They almost drive you at times, yeah. you know, like, you know, it's not, uh, these big tires spoil you kind of. I mean, it's still hard to be the fastest every day, but uh, them skinny tires give you a little reality check on, on who's boss. <laughs> Certainly. Now, uh, you think Mike is uh, completely retired? or you think you'll get him back into it before the season's over? Oh, he'll be back. Okay. He, he can't retire yet. I would hope not. I look forward <laughs> to seeing him out there. Uh, me as well. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to run every week with all these cars, so uh, um, the wife might have something to say about that. So I need to make a, take a little reality check myself on that. So Mike will be back in, I'm sure, the week I'm, when I'm not. Okay, awesome. Josh St. Clair, good luck today, my man. Hey, thanks. Okay, last but not least, opening day pro stock winner, Kevin Douglas. And Kevin, I know you're, uh, you got a special in memory uh, reason why you're racing tonight and uh, something that you're going for. Tell me yeah, about it. Yeah, you know, Ben Clark um, just had a celebration of life last night. Um, good friend of mine, really good friends with his dad. His dad's what enabled me to start driving a pro stock. Um, so it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough day. Um, but, you know, he's here with us and it's going to be for him. So hopefully we can do something with it. Awesome. Look forward to seeing it. In loving memory of Ben Clark tonight, ran the number 21. And uh, I remember when you got an Oxford Pro Stock feature win, it's pretty tough competition down there to win there, and you yeah. won in uh, Ben Clark's car. I did. Uh, that's, you know, his dad gave me the opportunity to race there part-time, and uh, Ben and I would kind of swap off time driving the car, and that night was mine. It was the 75 lapper, and everything worked out that night, and it was awesome. I mean, to win at Oxford, 75 lapper, I started last, and to win it, it was the highlight of my career until Boss Hog last year, you know. So um, there's a lot of thanks to John, and uh, Ben's going to be missed. So it's it's tough. All right. Again, racing in memory of him tonight. Good luck, Kevin. Thank you very much. And uh, have fun out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. And a very solid start by the 41. Joey Peasley follows up the inside to take over second. Shane Lane up to third, and the 07 is falling back on the high side. Nick Calvert in the 07 hung out to dry. He's now barely hanging on to the top five. Getchell in the 88 fills up the fourth position. And we've got a battle for second. Shane Lane in the 02 now takes over runner-up honors. Joey Peasley holding on to third momentarily, but Getchell fills the inside in the 88. Dave Getchell in the 88 now takes over third. And Calvert's going to come back into the mix. Your outside pole sitter now looking to move up to fourth.
Side by side for the last row. Brandon Fowler in the 72 picks off a position. And now sets his sights on Joey Peasley in the 17. Halfway flags have just been posted. Five to go and it is all the 41. Logan Melcher smooth sailing ahead. Shane Lane comfortably in second with no one around. But there's pressure for third. Dave Getchell in the 88 trying to hang on with pressure from behind. Nick Calvert in the 07. Joey Peasley gets sideways down the front stretch and he gives away the top five to Brandon Fowler in the 72. Two to go for Melcher in the 41. A lap and a half remain, and the battle is for third, fourth, and fifth. A three-car battle, and Calvert goes around. White flag flies, and the yellow comes out. Ooh, that's a tough call. Typically, once the white flag is shown, the race has ended, but yes. they, okay, it's going to be called. The race is over. Logan Melcher picks it up as the white flag was shown. Steve Chacoin. Side by side now for second as Chacoin falls back on the outside groove. Chabuck takes over second place in the 15. Hinkley follows suit in the other number 15. Up to 30 goes and Hinkley quickly takes a peek to the high side of Scott Chabuck now for second. And look who's already halfway through the field. The double zero, Jeremy Wharf from dead last is up to fourth. Nick Reno comfortably with a half a straightaway lead on that second place battle. The 215 cars, Chabuck and Nick Hinckley. Jeremy Wharf looks to be closing in on that two car battle for second and third. Halfway flags were just posted. Now four to go for the 77, Nick Reno. Nick Reno, uh, sorry, Nick Hinckley continues to work on Scott Chabuck now with two to go for second. As the rest of the pack is closing in slightly, led by Jeremy Wharf, then Kevin Douglas right on his tail, and don't count out Josh St. Clair in the 14. White flag is out. And it's close quarters going into turn one between Jeremy Wharf and Kevin Douglas, both fighting for the bottom. It's gonna be Nick Reno for heat number two. Get ready to go green. Pace car is in, green flag is out, let's go. Joey Peasley gets a how do you do and gets bumped out of the way onto the turn one and he's caught on the outside with some heavy hitters right behind him. Looking at three wide, but Peasley shuts the door. In the meantime, up front, it is Logan Melcher, Shane Lane, and Nick Reno, one, two, three.
Nick Reno out around the outside of Shane Lane into second. Lane shuffled back to third. Then comes the 88 of David Getchell. He's moved up a couple spots into fourth. Up front, Nick Reno looking outside for the lead on Logan Melcher. Reno and Melcher side by side, wheel to wheel into turn three. Reno gets a good run down into the turn. Has a nose out front as they come onto the front stretch. Now Nick Reno's transponder was working when he rolled onto the track, but it was lost during the hot laps. So the 77 is your race leader. Melcher second, Shane Lane third, Getchell fourth. Now into the clear, the 14 of Josh St. Clair breaks the top five. Back in the pack, things stacking up behind the 88 of David Getchell. And a couple cars get together over in turn three. Scott Chabak and Nick Calvert go around. Little bump there on the start, but Nick Reno shakes off the challenge from Logan Melcher. Shane Lane trying to come up to grab second. The champ is right behind him now in the 14. Melcher drives out around back into second. Shane Lane settles down into the third spot and he's got some heavy hitters right behind him. Now remember Nick Hinckley in that 15 at the start of the race, he got shuffled all the way back. Joey Peasley takes a ride down through the infield. Second caution flies, some dirt kicked up to the bottom of turn two, and Joey Peasley hung up in the infield, not far enough off the racing surface to be in a safe spot to leave him. Hammer down once again to turn one. Nick Reno and Logan Melcher. Melcher stays with him pretty good, tries to get down in front of St. Clair, just barely gets in there. Tight squeeze for the 41, made it stick. St. Clair to third. Kevin Douglas working the outside now on Shane Lane. That's for fourth position. Shane running strong in the 0-2. But Lane and Douglas make some heavy contact going into turn one. Douglas goes out and gives him room. This time overpowers the 0-2 to take over the fourth position. That'll put Lane back into fifth. Pair of 15s racing for sixth with Hinkley inside, Chabak on the outside. Logan Melcher not letting that uh, 41 car or check that, let, not letting the 14 car run away. That battle starting to heat up for the fifth position. Chabuck and Hankley right to the tail end of the number 02. Chabuck will set it up to the outside. Nick Reno using up every bit of racetrack he can find. The car really free. Chabuck still working on the high side of Shane Lane. Give that spot to Chabuck at the line that time by 21 hundredths of a second. Patiently working the outside. In the meantime, Kevin Douglas starting to turn up the pressure on Logan Melcher for the third and final spot in victory lane. Yeah. 
Melcher goes out wide. Douglas able to grab the spot. Halfway this time. 20 down, 20 to go. Steven Chagoin goes around in turn one. Oncoming traffic gets underneath, and we've got Pace car heading back in. Let's go green. <laughs> Trouble for St. Clair. Gets turned over in turn two and backs it into the wall. There you see the rear end damage on the 14 of St. Clair. Shortened up that uh, rear end pretty good on the car. Ready to go once again. <laughs> David Getchell taking a shortcut through turn one, but everybody makes it through okay. Kevin Douglas brings Nick Hinckley with him up in a second. They were the top two cars in this division on opening day. Melcher there in third. Shabak is fourth. And Worf now rounding out your top five. Shane Lane shuffled back to sixth. Then comes the 72 of Brandon Fowler as Nick Reno's working his way back up through the field. Reno working on Fowler on the outside for seventh. Up front, Nick Hinckley not letting that 18 car of Kevin Douglas get away right there, just inches away. Jeremy Worf in the double zero looking outside of Scott Chabuck for fourth and fifth. As Reno continues to work the high side as well outside of Brandon Fowler. Nick Hinckley stalking that number 18 car looking low. Hinkley looks a little better on exit of turn two. They get 10 laps to get it sorted out. 30 down, 10 to go this time by the stripe. Logan Melcher all alone in the third spot. Melcher with a strong run tonight. Looks like Scott Chabuck is shaking off the challenge from Jeremy Wharf, comfortably now in fourth. The race right now is between the top two drivers from two weeks ago. Douglas and Hinckley. They were both tied last year with four feature wins apiece to top the division. Douglas looking to go two for two here in 2022. Five laps to go when they cross the stripe. Harriman gets up out of the way as the leaders come down the front chute.
Working the passing flag on the number 80. Not sure if Douglas was saving something for the closing laps, but he's starting to pull away a little bit. A one car length cushion. That's about the biggest lead Douglas has had in this race. This time by two laps to go. If Hinckley's got anything, he's got to do it now. Douglas is strong on exit. Once again, pulls out another car length. Shortens up the corner and Hinckley brings it back another car length. Final time down through turn three and four. Checkered flag is up. Kevin Douglas goes two for two. Trouble over in turn number three. It's Harriman and Lane that got together over in turn three. But Kevin Douglas goes back to back. But I have a feeling this one is a little bit more special tonight. Let him hear it, folks. Kevin Douglas. Kevin, this one's a little special tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Ben's going to be missed. And uh, I feel for his family. I feel for everybody. Um, he guided me through all that melee that was happening in this race. I don't know how we made it through, but you know what? This one's for him. Runner-up honors, back-to-back. -back. You really had a close one there uh, with about uh, eight. Seven, six laps to go. You were right up there. And then the last five laps, he drove away at car length. What happened? Yeah, I just, I tried to make a move on the outside when we got up, got up by that lap, uh, that lap car and just, we were turning the same time. So it was really, would have needed either something to happen so I could get beside him or what, but really getting old finishing second to the 18 already. And it's only two races in. So uh, regroup, I don't know, just seemed like one of those nights, every lane I got in, I got brought back to the back before I could go back to the front. So. Uh, we certainly noticed it right off the bat. That was a tough start, but luckily there was a lot of cautions to help you have another shot. Yeah, definitely. I uh, just got to really thank the guys down the pits, uh, my wife, my kids, uh, all the sponsors on the car, Ideal Portable Toilets, Norm's Used Cars, Delano Seafood, and the Galley. For the first time this season. In a decade? No, you had a win last year, right? You had a pro stock win last season. Well, a third's pretty good. Logan Melcher, everybody. Who do you got to thank? Oh, man, I got to thank everybody. I got to thank my grandparents, my grandma, my bump. Uh, TNL Automotive, that's my shop and my father. We put it all in together. I got to thank Randy Schmidt. He's a big help. My Uncle Kurt, he's on the radio. He's a great help. Uh, I got to thank Dash Hill Transportation. He's been a big help over the years, been with us. Nelly's Auto Sales, he's jumped on board again this year. Uh, Buck Sand and Gravel, Amsoil. I mean, I could go on for days. Everybody knows me. All right, Logan, you good? You got anything else you want to say about the race? Got a heat race win. Nice job. Yeah, I mean, I was very ecstatic just to get that. You know, it was a B heat. I don't care. I'll take it. It's still pro stocks. But uh, now the car was just too tight for the feature. Every time I'd try to get a big run on these guys, I could watch them throw it in the corner. Once we hit the middle of the turn, when you really need that front to bite, it just it was just scrubbing up just a little. And then I'd try to just throttle it out. Next thing you know, I'm cooking the right rear tire. And it, this weren't my day, but Kevin got it. All right, that's going to do it from Coastal Auto Parts, Victory Lane.